Hello again guys, welcome to Out of Nowhere Let's continue this material We reached this step, so we have uh, all the heights of the material And now we need to start the creation of the albedo map And make the roughness map I have made just a couple of modifications to the base material, so I have reduced the scale of the detail clamps and I have cranked up the opacity of that map. The first thing that we are going to do is take the height map as it is now which is this and pass it inside a curvature node I usually use curvature smooth so we can hook the output inside our curvature we just miss a normal map conversion node and then the curvature node is going to work go into the settings of the intensity of the normal map and just make the intensity a big a bit strong now i usually do also a copy of the normal map channel because i like to export not only the DirectX normal maps but also the OpenGL normal maps because usually I render all this stuff inside Blender and now we have a curvature smooth I'm going to pass this inside the levels node because as you can see in the properties window uh, we are just using a small portion of the actually image depth so we are going to move the black arrow at the start of the curve and the white arrow at the end of the curve so we can use all that gray scale from back black to white and pass it inside a gradient map so let's go into the gradient editor click on the gradient and to start with we are going to set the first pin to a dark green and we are going to set the white pin to a brighter green so we have this type of scale of color now we end up with this gradient and we can start to activate the base material input node for the base color we click through the base color and we can hook up the output of our gradient to the base color and this is the effect for now pretty basic now I am going to activate also the roughness and the normal map inputs so we just need to hook up the normal map that we, we have here and this is gone, going to give us more details over our surface and then we want to hook up the roughness I usually use the curvature of the model which has good variations pass it inside the level channel so we use just one node of type curvature to feed two level nodes 
and then I'm going to hook it inside the roughness map. Take the values a bit higher because the moss is pretty much all the way up rough. Let's continue to build our color map. This is just the start because we want to add lots of variations inside our map. So the first thing that I'm going to do is pass the these levels inside a slope blur grayscale so we can pass this like that and we are going to use a noise like this one which is a black and white spots of type 2 and hook this up inside the slope so let's open the map and take a look at the result so we need to take the intensity a bit down so we keep some small details of the original surface and we have this kind of noisy edges let's play a bit with the samples Okay, maybe five samples it's going to work for us I am going to duplicate my first gradient map and take a look at it and we want to start blending these two nodes so we make a blend input the two maps and now we are going to start to play with the blending mode let's see the overlay mode gives me somehow the effect that I want so as you can see if you get close to the map uh, there is some noise near the borders of the perfect map that we had before and this is better so we can hook that up to our base map, base color map it is just too much green from what I think the color should be but we are using as you know a multiply type of blending so it is multiplying in fact also the colors so in the gradient maps we want to take the values and desaturate them to desaturate the values you just need to select the color picker and move it a bit to the left part of the gradient editor in this way you are going to desaturate everything now as you can see we have this kind of organic growth that is given by the first grunge maps so if we take that grunge map we can use it to make a variation over our texture so I would think I will make this kind of gradient map pass it inside a blend node I will take the grunge map output and hook it inside the mask opacity mask of the blend and using this as a base we can just duplicate it and change its colors so I am going into my gradient map and I want to make some color variations as you can see inside our 2d view window the map is taking effect so we can play with all our values I like this uh, yellowish color for the variations of the moss you may want to use a reference image and this is the result so we can use that map instead of this map and input that inside our forced blend this is subtle but it is working pretty well 
let's work some more inside our gradient editor and change more that maps so this is the effect that we get I think that we have a bit too much ambient occlusion so if we go inside our ambient occlusion node we can see that it this is pretty strong so if we tweak the settings a bit that's better maybe 0 0.05 okay that's okay we can dock it again and we can return to the editing of the color map let's see from a close distance okay that is fine but I want to make some more variations because it is going to look more realistic in the end so let's keep this as our last blend node for the base color and I will use a map something like hmm, let's see let's see I think I'm going to use this grunge map this is cool and we are again going to make another blend out of this blend here we are going to use output of our grunge map and hook it up inside the opacity mask and I want to make a variation of this blend node okay guys so we are going to pass it just inside the levels node so I make a level node and hook the blend inside it we are going to hook the output of the level nodes inside our foreground of the last blend and we can start to play with the levels and we are going to see the difference if you want to look at the mask you just can take the last pin of the levels drag all the way up and this is the this is what the grunge map is doing to our last texture node so if we drag the white arrow down we are achieving a lighter color and if we do the inverse thing we are going to end up with the darker colors in the other areas okay so this is the kind of the effect that we are searching for so i am going to make it dark so now we have these kind of variations and these looking pretty nice we have this kind of strands look inside our moss now we are going to try to give to that strands um, more movement because now they seem too much straight to do that we just needed to pass the last strand clamps nodes inside a warp node and we can drive that using our noises and just going to use a gaussian noise and let's try and see what is going to happen to our strands so we're going to need to play a bit with the settings so let's lower the scale and this is kind of the result that we are getting so i am going to make those warp nodes also inside my other outputs this now is more organic and more realistic 
and as you can see we have made the base color map I am just making somehow the graph more ordered never forget to use the frames to keep all your materials and all your graph parts in order so here I'm going to call this group albedo map this is going to be our map generation now if you want to make some roughness variation of this organic growth over our moss you just need to use this mask that we have used here which is the rounds map and use a blend to mix it to our levels so we just need to add blend maybe add directly that map to the first foreground channel as you can see we already have some changes and then we can play with the blending modes and let's see we can use a subtract type of map and playing with the opacity it's going to give us how much that part will be rough so we can just play a bit with that and achieve something that we like these as always are subtle effects that I use so sometimes you just want to change the values in 0.01 increases and that is going to give you a lot of difference inside the material now the cool part of substance designer is that we can make all those all these kind of procedural materials the fun part is always the power to change the shape of our base moss so if we want to make some variations of this same material we just need to change the scale of our base noises and we can achieve almost everything to make this more organic we can also pass this pretty ordered clamp gradient inside a warp node and use the other base texture to deform our base texture or if in this case this is not working we can just make a Gaussian noise as before pass our texture inside that warp node and changing the values of the Gaussian noise we are achieving this more organic type of clamping for this tutorial it's all in the next tutorial I am going to show you how to make our output uh, textures and our texture packing and I also going to show you how to make your custom node so we are going to end up with a node like this one but this node is going to have all the settings to make our strands clamp okay and we are not going to need all these nodes that you see here but we are going to compress everything inside one node let me know what you think if you liked it you know what to do if you don't like it just let me know in the comments why if you have questions i'm happy to answer to it inside the comments and we see each other in the next tutorial bye guys Thank <laughs> you.